a reading from the book of John, chapter 19, 1 to 24. It's hot up here. I need one of those Nigerian handkerchiefs that you were talking about. <clears throat> so then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. Then they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him with their hands. Pilate went down again and said to them, Behold, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. Therefore, when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard, heard that saying, he was more afraid and went again to the praetorium and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you, the power to release you? Jesus answered, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, if you, let the, if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out, sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover, and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered to them, then he delivered him to them to be crucified. Then they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Then many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Therefore the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. He said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier apart, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. They said, therefore, amongst, amongst themselves, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it. Who shall it be? That the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and my clothing, for they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. I'll try to get through this without crying. Starting from verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished and that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there. 
and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and bowed his head. He gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, the day bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asking Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other whom was, cruci whom was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones should be broke, shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes and a about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby." Hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Well, uh, is that hand clap for me or for Jesus Christ? Come on, give him a loud clap offering. Amen. We all know that Jesus is not in the grave. Amen? He's resurrected, and we'll celebrate that in a couple of uh, days or in a couple of hours, right? But we remember his, uh, his death and his burial. We remember his death. And when you read through the scriptures, it's really grotesque what happened. In fact, um, you have to really spend time, meditate, read the history, and see how the Romans killed people in, the, in those days. Either people who had gone against the law or people they didn't agree with um, were crucified. It was the worst death anyone could ever go through. Now, before I continue, I just want to say that if you have your kids here, we have no children's... Uh, class today, but you are more than welcome if they are, you know, restive. It doesn't bother us. We love kids. Amen? But if you feel that, you know, you need to take a walk with them, you can walk all the way to the back. There's a, uh, everything is fed into the children's ministry area. I can see somebody there, right, Amy? I can see you. You can wave back at me. And so, and we can just enjoy the service that way. And if there's still people coming in and there's space between you, you guys can scoot together so people can sit at the edges. Amen. Well, God is good. He's faithful. Now, usually every Easter, what we do for Good Friday is a time when we share in communion together. We don't give out the cups that you open, like the individual cups. We actually have the cups up here in front. And we've done this for a long time, from when we were about 50 people, and so on and so forth. We just believe that it's, it's good for us to spend a time in prayer with everybody. So usually my wife and I are up in front, uh, you know, from our family to yours, and we pray for you. Now, it's going to be brief. It will just be a few words of blessing. You come and you take the cup, uh, the bread and the cup, and then you go. I have some people who will be helping me here. I was going to do that after the message, but you know what? I will do that first, and then I'll just share a brief scripture with you, and then we can all uh, sing the final song and leave, because we don't want to make it a very long service. We thought we could keep it within an hour, but I don't think we can do that today, but we'll do our best. Now, we're not going to rush it, but I want you to come thinking. But before that, like I said, if you uh, feel that you need to walk into the kids' ministry area with your kids, that's perfectly okay. We won't charge you for that, all right? 
It's free. <laughs> God bless you. So let's look at a few scriptures today. I just want to say something, and then I will finish off after we have, we're done the, the, the uh, praying together, the communion and the praying together. Is that okay? All right, so let me repeat this. So if, you've not been, if this is your first time at Joy Fountain, by the way, welcome. We love you. Uh, thank you for joining us this Good Friday. You will come up here with your family. You will take the bread and the wine. I have some helpers here. And then throw the cups in there. We have where you put the cups after drinking. And then you come up here. Now, the uh, communion is for those who have given their hearts to the Lord Jesus. You know you are a follower of Jesus. If you feel in your heart that, look, I'm not a follower of Jesus. I don't believe in what they're doing. I don't agree with what they're doing. That's okay. We're not going to look at you and pick you out and say, hey, why aren't you coming out here? You are free. You are, you are investigating. And that's perfectly okay. But if you would like to participate, we are more than happy to have you come up. That's if you have given your heart to the Lord, you know him as your savior. Now, some people ask, and I explain this every year, should we give our children communion? You know you are too young. We don't baptize children here. They have to come of age, know who Jesus is. But I, give, I have always given my children communion because whatever I eat, they eat. Amen? And the Bible says that they're sanctified because of me. Now they're all grown up. Um, you know, they can make their decisions. But when they are children and as they're growing up, uh, I believe that it is important that we uh, teach our children the faith. The Bible says that we should teach them when they are young. You know, when they are old, they will not depart from it. So if you are comfortable with that, that's what we have done as a family. And I do not see anything in Scripture that says you cannot share the communion with your children. Um, they are still under you. Uh, you know, people smoke in their cars with their children in the back. You know, so this is my own smoke. And uh, <laughs> they can get high on it with me, no problem. Amen. <laughs> If you get high after this today, uh, it's a blessed high. It's not a. <laughs> by the way, Jesus, by the way, Jesus is the most high, isn't it? So I'd rather be high on Jesus than high on anything else. Hallelujah! All right. So let me let me share this quickly with you. In uh, in um. I just want to say this. Uh, it's a question. Who will you choose? Say that with me. Who will I choose? Who will I choose? All right. On this day that Jesus was crucified, there was a choice to be made. Pilate presented to them a criminal and the Lord Jesus Christ. And they chose the criminal. And the question is, why would they choose a criminal? Because Jesus had been good all along. Healed people. Fed people. You know, I've been investigating this and I think I have an answer. And I, I want you to consider what I'm about to say. And I do not believe that I'm wrong because I can prove it from Scripture. I believe that they got to these people and manipulated them because there was a door with which to, through which they could enter and manipulate them to hate a good man. What, how did they get to their hearts to manipulate them, to heal, he, hate someone who heals, to hate someone who can create a burger, tuna burgers with the best mayor you've ever had? How could you hate such a person? You go to his meetings... There's no food around, but when it's time to eat, he says, let us pray. Who has bread? Who has fish? Bring it. It's just for my lunch, sir. That's no problem. Let's just give thanks to God. And the next thing you see, everybody ate and there was leftover. I would want that person to be my friend. I would not want to betray that person. So what did, what, how did they get to them? Let me tell you. They manipulated them. But it, 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 no human being, is, it's, it's impossible to manipulate someone who doesn't have an open door for manipulation. And I'll tell you what it was. They were already offended at Jesus Christ. So the first offense, Judas was offended at him. Because Judas was stealing the money. So the more he stole, the more condemned he felt. So rather than repenting, he began to hate him. So he was offended. Number two, the people were offended. Because in John chapter 6, he multiplied bread and fish for them. Now, they wanted more. So they crossed the water and they went over to meet him on the other side. And he said to them, I know why you are looking for me. And you are looking for me because, not just for the miracles, but because of the bread you ate. You ate those burgers and they were nice, right? And you want more? Well, I'm going to tell you something. This is not the time to make burgers. It's the time to sit down and listen to my word. It's like, no, we want burgers, fish burgers. We've never had anything as good as that. They are better than McDonald's. They're better than Burger King. That's what we want. He said, no, 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 let me tell you. Uh, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will be... Oh, no, you are a witch. What are you talking about? We want 
Then he said, no, no, no burgers for you. I am the bread that came down from heaven. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. What do you mean you are the bread that came down from heaven? Then they got offended. You are Mary and Joseph's son. From Nazareth. Street 45, house number 13. Don't tell us what we know. He said, no, before Abraham was, I am. Oh my goodness, they tore their hair out. How can you say such a thing? You mean you are older than Abraham? You are not even 50 years old yet. So they were offended at him. Number three. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious rulers were also offended at him. Why were they offended? Because they had the crowds always looking at them like they were descended from heaven. They had their robes and the phylacteries and they had everything. And they would come and teach the scriptures but no power. So Jesus shows up in John chapter 9. He heals a blind man who was a member of the synagogue and the blind man said, when they were trying to convince him that Jesus is a sinner, he said, well, I don't know if he's a sinner. All I know is that once I was blind, now I can see. They said, what are you talking about? We know more than this fellow. You were born in this synagogue. Well, I was born in this synagogue, but I was blind. You guys were never able to give me sight. So why do I have to listen to you? Then they continued. Then he asked them, do you also want to be his followers? They said, you must be crazy. They called his mom and his, father, his dad. Come here. You have not raised this boy well. He grew up in this. Well, he, well, we don't know what to do. The Bible said they were afraid of the leaders, of the rulers. So what happened? Who won? The blind man who could now see won. So they became envious of Jesus. So they used politics, religious laws, the two, political laws, religious laws, to get him arrested. So one offended was Judas, others offended were the people, and the third offended were the religious rulers. With the string of offenses, they were able to find a Judas. We don't want a Judas here. The question I have for you today is this. As you partake in the communion, are you already offended at Jesus Christ? You know, some people attend church, but they're actually offended at Jesus. Because the manipulators of the day of Jesus are still around today in the spirit of that, in that context, manipulating people. There are governments manipulating us that the worst religion, the worst faith is the Christian faith. Right? There are people who are afraid to be persecuted, so they become offended at Jesus Christ. If you go to Matthew chapter 24, they asked him, what is the sign of the end of time? He said, be careful that you are not deceived. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. Many will be offended because of me. And then I will close by saying, he didn't leave us hanging with this issue of offense. He said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. I'm trying to make it short because it's a family service. Are you following? This is all scriptural. I will give you the scriptures if you want. Matthew, John chapter 19, all of it. Matthew 11, verse 6. Matthew 27, verse 15 to 22. And then Matthew 24, verse 10 to 13. Matthew eleven six 6 is where he said, Blessed are those who are not what? Offended in me. Because if you are offended in him in this time, the manipulators will get to you. If you are not offended in him, the manipulators will not get to you. So if you are here today and you are offended, maybe we did something wrong to you in Joy Fountain, please forgive us. Maybe one day I was going through the building and you said, hi, pastor, and I didn't hear you. And you thought I just did my face like that because I didn't want to talk to you. No. Or maybe I preached something that you didn't really like from the Bible. And I said it again after another Sunday. And then you didn't come for two Sundays. Then you came again one Sunday. And then I said something similar to that. You said, well, this guy is after me. Somebody must have told him something. Nobody told me anything about you. <laughs> so, do not be offended because of him. If you don't like my face, that's okay. But do not be offended. Jesus Christ. Because he's done nothing to you. That's exactly what happened. Offense opens the door. As soon as the offense is sitting there, don't give it roots. Pull it out. Deal with it. Have you been blessed this morning? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, go ahead. It's okay. Oh.
for the word, not for me. Amen. Praise God. So we will have communion together. We'll have some music playing softly. You guys find something. And then as you come forward, I think we can begin from this end. And then we'll just go like that. And then we'll go into this group. And then we'll go also all the way there. So you come with your family. All right? Um, Where are my helpers? (laughs) I have somebody else who's helping. Matt. Just you? Okay. Matt is in trouble. I'm going to have so, so many people. All right. Fulcha and I will be over here. I don't need that. I don't need that right now. Just in case. I brought it just in case. Yes. Thank you. We are the grandparents. We are the parents. Give me a second here. Are you ready? Just start, wait for me. Okay, so Jesus said we should do this, what? In remembrance of him. He says as often as we do it. You can do it every day. Do you know that you don't have to wait to come to a minister like myself. You can have this with your family at home. You can share communion and pray. It is recognized. Don't just say, oh, yo, we can't. We have to wait till Pastor Andaza. No. You as, a, as the head of your home, hold your hands together with your family. And if you're a single parent, male or female, you do that with your children. God recognizes it. He says, as often as you do it. Those of us who have an office, we have a place. We have a place of authority. We have a place of dissemination, disseminating the truth of God. But in your home, you can share communion too. Amen? So when you come, you take the bread. You pray there. You say, God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for sending the Lord Jesus, you know, to take my place. We've seen that in Scripture today. For myself and my children, because it's for you and your family. And then you all come here. Children love this thing. They don't forget. For some of you who, uh, you was like, oh, why didn't they put the children away? This is why we don't put them away. In this, th- let them see what we see. Let them en- experience what we're experiencing. And you know what? They will grow with it on the inside of them. Say amen to that. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready? All right. How come is David who is first? You deliberately took that place. <laughs> I hope the children in the house are happy and everybody is good. Now, we will dismiss in a few minutes. We'll have one more song. So let's rejoice with that as we celebrate Jesus Christ because we're not mourning his death. He didn't remain in the grave. But I want to say, you know, that I believe that next year we'll have three teams of people here praying for people because we'll have way more people who would need uh, ministry. But what what we've done here, I want you to take it to heart. It's not for nothing. You see, there is a grace that visits the house. You see, God is a spirit. And certain services carry certain type of grace, while others... The Bible says somewhere Jesus was in a place, there was people in the house, and the power of God was present there to heal. This morning, I believe the power of God was present here to bless his people. And that's why we pray. It's a minute prayer, 30 seconds. Take it to heart. And some of you, we will just feel that we should say something why we don't say the same thing to somebody else. Take it to heart. It's not for nothing. We're doing everything we're doing, I believe, by the grace of God. And some of you tear up because those words, you are not expecting those words, and they went right up to a spot in your spirit. That tells you that the Spirit of God is here. Jesus said something. He said, this, the words that I speak to you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. Uh, the message I shared earlier on, Remember I said I will close it off and then I'll ask the worship team. Maybe the worship team can just uh, begin to come up and get ready for the last song. But I want you to remember, offense is one of the things that the enemy will use in the end times. And when you look around the world today, so many people are offended by their, maybe their dad, their mom, their family member. Offense is something that is so common and, and, and you, 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 you hear people say, I will never forgive this, I will never forgive that. And I've said to you, it's the door by which, it's one of the doors by which the enemy takes hold on a person who is a follower of Jesus. Because you're not out there doing some criminal thing or doing some, you know, some egregious sin, whatever. But you, you're following the Lord. And yet, he's looking for a way to capture your heart. And one of those ways is offenses. And But Jesus closed it all by saying, this is the key. Do not be offended in me. And if he said do not be offended in me, it means also... His body may have done something. You may have been in a local church where somebody did something that hurt you. 
Don't hold on to it. Let it go. Let it go. Some people say, I will never go into a church again because those people, they gossip. Well, people gossip everywhere. But the church, people should not be gossiping. But because you are a victim of it, doesn't mean you carry it on your shoulder. I want to say one more time, I've said this a lot here at this church. When you drive a car, there's a reason why the windshield is far bigger than the rear view mirrors all combined. The one in front of you, the one to the side, and the one to the right. There's a reason why they're all small. It's so that you can focus on the future. Is there somebody who will focus on the future with me today? And I want you to remember, the Lord Jesus is always with you. He said, I will never leave you, nor what? Nor forsake you. Can you say that with me? He says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And in that we stand and we trust. And please say with me this morning, or this after, is it afternoon yet? Well, morning. Say, I will not be offended, not be offended. in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus. One more time, say with me, offenses, offenses. Leave, me leave me alone. I will not live on offenses. I will not feed off offenses. Feed off offenses. Amen. 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 Where the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, may his face shine upon you, and may he give you peace. Amen. Over to you guys.